Hey everyone, welcome to the Sound Test Podcast. This is your host, Brian here, and I am joined by a, a league of creatives. Um, I'm joined with Deontay here. Why you gotta be me first? Because you're, you know, the most creative one out of all of us. I mean, you know, the, the, please tell me of my creative deeds. Oh, I would man. love to know what I've been creative about, um, and what man. I have created. Um, um, you have Minute Maid in that background, and you're very creative <laughs> of um, what you use that, um, the types of drinks that you make with it. Um, very creative, I, I, I might say. Sponsor us, Minute Maid. Thinking creatively. <laughs> See, look, now, now, now the Minute Maid is a character itself. All what you had to do was add glasses to make it a character. What's uh, up, y'all? We have Clayton here. I'm bored to death, but who wants to read about Jewish music history and culture? Yeah. <laughs> you look so disappointed. Like, yeah, that's my fucking life, this fall break. I'm more confused than anything. Is that a whole course or? No, that's just for one paper, which is about like and 12 pages. And that sounds like it would bore me to right no, I, ta- I don't just talk about judaism i also talk about christianity and other things <laughs> 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 it's not as boring as it seems i promise but you're and we have max here if you see me turn dark as night press there it goes yeah. max is the yeah. unlocked character how serendipitous <laughs> Mm-hmm. You got to get to level Bruh, 33 to unlock something. him. Level 33 to unlock. Oh. Or if you spend yes. five, if you if you spend 500 max coins, you can unlock him immediately. <laughs> you lock him immediately. You pay to win. <laughs> become a VIP. <laughs> got to get that DLC. Yeah, become the, the P- VIP. And give us your social security number. We'll get all the max coins to you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I, I think there's other ways around that. Like we're breaking some laws at that point. If the game is asking for your social security number, for you to use your, like, use funds from that, shouldn't be playing that game. But, um, so the, the topic for today, um, we're t- talking about games that do not exist. Um, more specifically, we're, we're talking about games that uh we would want or games that currently you know if we take out a different ip or we make something up and dream games that we would want to play or that we want to exist and that other we want others to play um so rules are very simple we just came up with a couple of games each and we can definitely use existing ips almost like pretty much all of mine my choices are existing IPs, so uh, properties that I thought, hey, take this genre, take this genre, put them together. We should have something, you know, cool and extravagant. So, uh, yeah, just a lighthearted podcast, just to, you know, get the creative juices flowing as we go into holiday break. So, uh, I'll go first. And Plus, we just had that very, very heavy... Yeah, Attack on Titan <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, that was very. Uh, you know that podcast is in very two hours. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, something that's a little bit more fluffier on the brain. Yes. Yeah, my brain no, no work no more. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> that episode this semester. <laughs> so, I'll get started. Um, this is something I've. This game is, is something I. I I believe should have been a thing like many, many years ago. And it kind of exists, but not in the modern sense anymore. And the, the first time it they did this game, it was complete garbage. Um, I want a... So I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. It, Jurassic, the original yeah. Jurassic Park is my favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. I I just don't get tired of that movie. I actually watched the movie earlier this year for like um for his anniversary. I think it was like the, the 30th anniversary or something like that um in theaters and it was just like all over again i was just still mesmerized and it's it's crazy how a movie from like 93 was so like revolutionary so you know it it got it it understood the wonder 
of of dinosaurs and and how to make them cool and all that stuff. Um, so Jurassic Park had a iffy, you know, timeline on the quality of their games. Um, some of the games kind of been kind of bad. Some of them was kind of middle of the road. The few good ones were usually like the park simulator ones, the one that simulates you actually being in a park. But for the life of me, I don't know why they've never attempted again to make a Jurassic Park survival horror game. And so my my pitch is, all right, let's say it's the Jurassic World, you know, sequence where everything, the you know, the park goes to complete shit, dinosaurs running amok, whatever. I don't want to play like a main character with a gun. I want to play like just a regular tourist, like a guy who's just there to have fun. And maybe he gets like separated from his family or something like that. And he has to explore this park now with all these dinosaurs. And he has to, you know, maneuver his way through different environments. You know, like let's just say the park power goes off and stuff like that. So now he has to find ways to like turn the power on or you know, travel through the through the forest and things like that. He gets separated from his family and he's like on a timetable to get back to, you know, the the safety docks or whatever. And in my mind, I'm thinking more of all right, who who here has, has played the, the Tomb Raider games? The the new Tomb Raiders. A little bit. Uh, a little bit. A little I played bit. like an hour of the first one. <laughs> and I was like, eh, maybe later. I mean, it was nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't what I was feeling at the time. But I know what you're talking about. And I know how the games kind of sort of feel. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking... Uh, you know, those, the, it sounds terrible, but the death sequences <laughs> that Lara Croft go through where you're just like, oh, oh, oh. The ass, yeah, the gruesome ass death sequences, yes. I, w- I want this okay. game to be a hard R, not in the way you think of it. Uh, I'm sorry, hard M. Sorry, <laughs> R rating is for movies. Uh, M rating game. I'm like, rate, rate it in for what? Hard R. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I'm thinking anyway, of anyway. It's rated M. M, M Just rated. like a rated M. <laughs> a M, a hard M rated game. Whereas, like, when you when you mess up, boy, you mess up and you get destroyed. So, like, just imagine you're you're doing a mission and you're you're running from the T Rex and it finds you, boy, and it's just ripping you to shreds. Like, it's just chomp, body flying all the place. Or combat levels of gore. Or the the animations of the deaths. Yeah, like I I I think that would be so dope. And like bonus points if you can think of like a developer to like make this happen. And I think either Capcom, the team that does Resident Evil games, or Naughty Dog. Cause especially their like their fidelity of like graphics would like make that realism get there. But like Capcom does a great way of like their Resident Evil team does a great way of like managing expectations, the jump scares, building up tension, and just Naughty Dog just knows how to make a really nice, you know, structured story with with well pacing and, and stuff that keeps the excitement up. Um, and Naughty Dog as well, they they know how to make the wonder. So like, I'm not a big fan of the Uncharted games, but the the parts of Uncharted I hated was the shooting stuff. I hated that part. But the actual climbing and going through the different locales and like these big set pieces, Naughty Dog does that junk so well. So I just imagine like that grandeur mixed in with like the suspense that like a Capcom Resident Evil team can make and like these tight corridors and these puzzles that you have to solve. Oh my god, I'd 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 buy that game in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And they tried it once oh. before with Jurassic Park Trespasser. In like the early wasn't 2000s. that that old, that old that was that old game on the computer that looked like it looked terrible. It was it was trash. Hell. Yeah, it was janky. I know exactly. What My bad. It was like late nineties. It was like late nineties. Yeah, it was yeah. terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I remember we, that boy. We already got we, we already got a, a Jurassic Park survival horror. Capcom did that bad boy like 20 years ago. It's called Dino Crisis. It's not the same. <laughs> Dino Crisis, 
Dino Crisis is, is just like, hey, we're just gonna shoot dinosaurs. <laughs> like, yeah, well, that, especially that the, the third one. one. The, the, the third one got real stupid. No, there's only two. No, there's Dino there's, there's Dino Crisis three. There's a third Dino Crisis yeah. that I don't know about. That was the one that killed the franchise. <laughs> I know the second one was like an action game where it was like you were in zones and you had to get like it was just straight up go ahead and just defeat all the dinosaurs in the area. And then I know the first game was legitimately like, hey, we did real good with Resident Evil, so let's just do that, but with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> so and and I still I think I still have my copy of Dino Crisis. I always wanted I to play the games. I would love if Capcom did a remaster of them, or like or remake, like you know, Resident <laughs> Evil style remake. I think that would be cool. But but I think because. Not everybody's riding the high of those games, or anybody had like I haven't seen a lot of people ever like bring it up in like games that would like to be remastered list. Right. I mean, I personally would like it too, but maybe wishful thinking. It's, it's probably not because... happen, but yeah. I, and again, I just the idea of being on an island by yourself. Um, and, and parts of like Jurassic Park that I really liked about that, where they had to like figure out how to turn the power on, figure out how to like escape dinosaurs, figure out how to get to this complex to get to this area of the island. I always just love stuff like that. Yeah. I like it. I, I like it a lot. So, like, I have because a I think it, it opens up a, a new avenue of what a true survival horror can be in the style of like i don't know silent hill or outlast or even so games. like that like that aliens game what was it aliens isolation yeah uh-huh. where it's really hard to fight back because the yeah. enemy that you're going against is so powerful that you have to you know just maneuver around and try to figure things out quickly how to get around and things like that so I think that'd be pretty cool. And there's a bunch of, you know, enemy varieties because there's so much different freaking dinosaurs that you can different utilize. Shit, like, yeah. right. Imagine you, like, redo one of the scenes in Jurassic Park where you're, like, sneaking around you got a velociraptor in the room with you. Like, I'm just imagining that. Or maybe, like, a, like, a, you, you, feel, you're, you're in the, you're in the wilderness and you feel the footsteps of, like, a T-Rex and you have to stay <laughs> out of, you just hear, you have to stay out of his life, Oh, dude. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, and if you have, like, a dual sense sense? controller. Yeah. That dual sense. Boy, that gonna go crazy. But that, that haptic, but a haptic. Right. Uh, I still don't know about that. Mm. I, I don't think I've ever, like, really... Maybe because I don't play enough play, PlayStation 5. Um, and only, like, PlayStation 5 exclusive I've really played was Horizon. Um, and it doesn't really use the haptics. So, like, I'm not sold on the whole haptics thing. Uh, Deep Rock Galactic uses it. I don't play that game. You know that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Overwatch 2 uses it. Game. I don't play Overwatch on PlayStation. I play on Xbox. <laughs> uh, you, you, you have Astro's Playroom by default, technically. Yeah, I never touched that thing because I was like, why? Yeah, you should at least try that, and then you will definitely feel that for the haptic feedback and stuff like that. Mm, okay. Um, That's harmless. Moving on to Max. W- what is your choice? For your pick? Okay, so I have two of them. Right. The first one has slick already. No, not even slick. Has been done before, but not well. And I'm going to get into it. So, a different take on Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh oh. Right. We've had multiple different. We had Sonic Boom, that was a flop. We've had Sonic Lost Worlds, that was a flop. Uh, and we even had Sonic Forces. Now, I was we thinking of it in two different Sonic ways. Chronicles I, the dark... <laughs> yeah, 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 man, the, yeah, this man, there's been so many different takes on Sonic that have been not been done well. Uh, we we got on Lock Max but... again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but um, I love the darker theme of Sonic. Like, I'm thinking of, like, Archie comic Sonic. I'm thinking of, like, the like back in the day, Sonic Sat AM. 
that Sonic where it's sort of dystopian. And Sonic Forces tried to do it and failed spectacularly. They failed spectacularly because they don't... I guess it's too, I guess it's too, like, kid-friendly. They can't have anything permanent happen to any of the characters. They can't have any long-lasting consequences happen to everybody. At the end of the day, it has to be happily ever after. Sonic has to stay the, hey, chili dogs. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but you, like, he still I don't, did die. <laughs> he, man, no, because... He, they said he was tortured for months, and he, they, they went back to him, and he was like, "I'll be out of here in no time. Uh, I'm still faster." Like what? Like what? <laughs> Is that wrong? You want this, I you want, want this hedgehog to go through mental trauma. So, I mean, yes, narrative. Look, okay, narratively, I, 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 I just want a darker Sonic, man. I, I really get what Max is saying because, like, if you read the the Archie comics, there it gets. Would you get into like the midpoint of that series? Like stuff does get dark, uh, or like I, I think the darkest thing that I'm comfortable with Sonic being is like Sonic Adventure Two Battle, where it was like, you know, it, the world was actually at stake. Like this huge meteor yeah. was crashing into the the world, and everybody like you see the people on Earth seeing this giant meteor like, you know, tw- hurling towards <laughs> Earth. Oh yeah, like the moon, the, moon <laughs> the moon blew up. The moon blew up. So I, I get it. like you Literally can you can do Sonic in a like dark a, way and still make it a you know, crisis like, situation. Yeah, man. I like make it. That was the that was supposed to be the point of Sonic Forces. Like Eggman in that in the new guy. I can't even remember his stupid ass name. Um, uh, <laughs> it, it was, was it the Infinity Dude or? Yeah, the it did the guy with the little stone. The infinity stone. Yeah. Um, but you know, you had this you had this antagonist antagonist with this unmatched power that's supposed to be doing all this and they just prevail by the power of friendship. Like <laughs> <laughs> it, it it just wasn't told well. Sonic got, Sonic came back in the picture like on the first mission and then it was just like whatever. Your custom care, they, and this was the one opportunity for them to do a custom Sonic creator. They did it, and it was terrible. How do you mess that up? So many Gamer. Sonic fans, how do, <laughs> like so many Sonic fans, like myself, want a genuine Sonic original character creator? Because I was that nigga in high school that had my own Sonic OC. I was that much of a fucking I, I, nerd. I, I was that in, in middle school. I'm so, I'm so disappointed. Not bad. I, was, I, I liked Sonic, but I didn't know the concept of, you know, Sonic characters or or people that were Sonic fans making their own OCs until I got into college. Man, I was like, what? Fine. Man, I was so I was like, into it, man. I, I had I, no clue. I was like, that's kind of. Dare weird. I say? I, mean, I understand why. Yeah. Dare I say that's y'all first on us? I would stop. stop. <laughs> Uh, don't ruin it, man. It's different. It's different. It's different. It's different. It's different. It's, different. it's an animal. And that's all. And but, that's what every Sonic fan that did man, that shit. Said. I st- man, I even had. I had a friend in my man. What the fuck, it's, man? Y'all not right. Y'all <laughs> doing. So Max is legit, man. <laughs> but now nah, he, so he lost his character again. You gotta listen. You gotta listen. I was so in the trenches. Anyway, shape or oh my god. Do your thing. Yeah, I was so in the trenches Be that I had an, a friend of mine that uh, was an artist, like a really good artist. I had him draw my OC, I, and I still have that drawing to this day. Oh. I got to show it to y'all. I'll, I'll do y'all even I still better. Have this I made comics of my OC. Oh, you gotta know. I made comics. Brian, Brian, I made full backstories. Mm-hmm. I made. A side, I made side characters. What? Oh my god! But yeah, I was fully in the fucking trenches, bro. And no. I was like, "Oh, there's a custom character creator. I'm about to go fucking balls to the wall." And then it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all make me feel so much better about my. So, what would you like though? to see as a game? So, a gameplay wise, now gameplay wise, that's what I was going next. Um, I want some like. 
you know, I like Modern Sonic. I like feeling that sensation of speed. I love it. But Modern Sonic games are just not that engaging, not that difficult. Like, you had a little bit different... You had it, 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 it engaged a little bit more in the new Sonic game. What is it called? Sonic Frontiers? Yeah, I really Cause, because Frontiers. they changed. Yeah, because it was open world, and the gameplay was a little bit more engaging. But I'm thinking back to some of the other ones, like Sonic... Uh, Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations. Yeah, you had some some levels. Sonic Colors had some good stuff in there. Uh, but like Sonic Forces was a bad one where the gameplay just held your hand too much. You know, it's press X simulator to dash. Sometimes you got to jump. Sometimes. Uh, and I'm thinking like even those segments, like the running segments, you can make them a little bit more engaging. And I'm gonna use another fan, another not fan game, but another indie game that did it well as an example, and that's being Spark the Electric Gesture. Jester. I've Have any of y'all seen that. that game? I've always wanted to play yeah, it. Yeah, I've never played it. Like and, and they they did a, such a good job of making even the speed segments engaging. It isn't just an all rail on rail runner. You have to actually control as you're moving forward, so and and platform at the same time while you're moving fast. Like it's 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 engaging and even sometimes difficult. And I want to see some of that in a Sonic game, man. I wanna I wanna be excited to get a Sonic game again, because I the last one I was like legitimately geeked to get was like, shit, Sonic Unleashed. No, I really you know, love... I played I played colors. No, I I'm a, I'm lying. Sonic Colors. I played the fuck out of Sonic Wait, Colors. So you didn't like Generations? I, was, I did like Generations. I didn't I wasn't a fan of the classic Sonic sections. I don't know. Oh wow. I I I think they've done in terms of 3D uh classic Sonic, I think that Generations is the best. I didn't like the Yeah, it's definitely better than Forces. Forces was trash. Well, have you played Frontiers? No. Play Frontiers. It's it's not the the story is not much of a story because it's an open world game, but like mm-hmm. there's some cool story moments in there. So like um if I'm not mistaken, one of the writers for Sonic Frontiers is one of the writers on the new Sonic comics on the IDW um Ooh. Sonic comics and and if you haven't read those comics they're really good. Um, the Sonic IDW comics, it, it starts off with, all right, Eggman, after this last big fight, Eggman had like disappeared and like, they're kind of like fighting the remnants of Eggman, but they, you know, they feel he's still alive and he's still doing, you know, stuff in the background. But some of the writers from that was in Frontiers and there's like little story beats that are like really cool. Like you're the, the island you're on it kind of goes back and forth between like these this older civilization and there's like times where you kind of see like oh the civilization was 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 you know doing well and oh they just disappeared and why did they disappear or like there's like this moment where sonic can like feel the anguish from this society when they were like killed or whatever so try try fun chase out it, that's it's and everything is oh, kind of right. bleak ish in, in Frontiers. There's still goofy okay. moments, don't get me wrong. There's still some like incredibly goofy moments. And there's still some times where Sonic's like, hey, buddy. Or like, hey, buddy. When you go <laughs> fishing with Big. <laughs> like, it's still random stuff like that. But you should try Frontiers. But I, 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 I 100% would, you, would get what you mean. Like, there should be some some type of stakes to Sonic Story rather than just. Absolutely, man. Everything hunky dory. Mm-hmm. Now my second, my second thing well, is completely we, left fucking well, field. Well, 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 we're we're taking around. We're, we're going back. Yeah, yeah. Your turn. My bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just don't win. listen. Just don't follow instructions. You're just like my student. I'm playing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like my students. <laughs> they gonna clip this. Pay attention. Um, they gonna clip this. I hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Clayton, um, you're up next with your your game. That doesn't okay, exist. so uh, I'm coming up with my first idea. Well, the first idea that's presented that is that doesn't have an IP. So this game is called Blind Faith: Whispers of the Wind. 
This two-player co-op is set in a village surrounded by a magical forest. Each person has their adventure partner assigned before they are even conceived. One will always have no sight and the other is not able to hear. The two players will be able to restore their missing sense only by making it to Eden's Fountain of Truth. Though it is only a legend, the villagers send off each pair in the forest on their 18th birthday. Um, during their matriculation in their education system, each person, each person, whether deaf or blind, perfects survival crafts that help aid their other half, such as, but not limited to, astronomy. So, like, if you're deaf, um, you can use your astrology skill, well, astronomy skills, and um, guide um, each other through like this, like at night and stuff like that. Um, um, elevation. Um, so studying the land and like different elevations and how um, to survive in such climates and like elevation levels. Um, traps, like how to prepare a trap to capture food. Um, combat, potion, herbology. Um, and if you are the blind person, you, echolocation. So um, you can use your ears better. You have heightened hearing. And um, if you're blind or uh, like and if you're um, deaf or something like that, just other characteristics. So other senses will be high in to an extent. Um, it can only be played online or um, locally, but with two different game consoles. So if you had two Switches, you would play on two Switches, but it'll be more fun if you're in like different rooms so you won't like um, see each other's screens and stuff like that. Um, headphones are highly recommended to the person playing the blind character because their sense of hearing will be heightened. Um, the only actions visible to both players is their menu of actions, items slash inventory, and potions herbology log. This is a top-down 16-bit turn-based game that requires both parties to effectively communicate, for it is their blind faith that will guide them to the truth. Ooh, yeah. That is very Okay, so, so, first off, why did you do fucking homework for this? <laughs> I did it! I, 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 Jeez. <laughs> I'm telling you, literally. I can I, follow up behind that. I I, <laughs> I, 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 I legit woke up this morning. I was like, oh, we we have a podcast. We have to think of two or three games, and then um, like one of them is an IP. My last one is an IP, um, because I thought of three. But um, like again, I think a lot, and like, I'm in more of like the. I'm in the mindset as of late. Uh, especially like with playing a lot of music and all that stuff and still working on my art so like i draw inspiration from everything like everything and everywhere everything i consume so that that's what caused my creation like creativity to just pour out but yeah that was um so okay the may first thing about, oh. maybe i missed it so the character who's blind what does the the players do they see anything or oh, oh wait i wrote i wrote that down that's a good question oh um when played online one player has limited los i forgot to read that part and the other um hears nothing headphones are highly recommended to the person playing the blind character so um instead of like seeing an entire screen they'll only see a los around them or something like that okay so uh, let's say like it's like you're in a so, dark cave, like in so Pokemon. They're, they're they're not like it's not like just all black. Like they're like legally blind, where they're gonna yeah. see a little bit in front of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So kind of like in Pokemon games, you know, ever you go into a cave and you don't like have uh, it's not a lit cave. Oh, you, you have, have that flash. limited LOS. Yeah. Y yeah. Well, you don't uh, have flash. So I'm thinking about the gameplay too, like so. I'm thinking like the blind characters, say if you're navigating through an environment, a, you can hear like the sound vibrations of like say enemies or environmental hazards around you and those those waves come back to you and that's kind of how you see? Uh, yeah. So that's why it's highly recommended for the blind character to wear headphones because they're heightened hearing. Um, so it like if something is coming from like direction on the right or like behind you or front like we have that directional positioning that we know so if you send off a sound wave just like a because my inspiration was a bat for that echolocation ability because that's what they use since bats are blind so they use echolocation to locate their prey and then that, that's how they hunt okay um, what if you set it all to mono <laughs> oh Bro, jesus christ <laughs> and i'm thinking like <laughs> I'm thinking like gameplay for the like the 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 deaf 
person. Like they can see, like since it's top down, whatever di direction you're facing, you can see. Like it's it's illuminated, right? But like around you, you don't get those same triggers, those same sound triggers as the blind person. So you can literally only see what's in your depth of field yeah. Yeah, okay, and where so you play. That's that's, 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 that's that's actually pretty. Like that's gonna take some next level communication. I can see a lot of funny moments coming from that mm -hmm. shit. Yeah, and like you have to be very like it's it will be very like audio heavy for the person who would be playing the blind well, who be playing as the blind character because um my thought was also um different terrains that you interact with or like step over so like if you're walking you know what um or genuinely there are some people who live in climates that causes for snow um they know what like fresh stepping on fresh snow sounds like or like yeah. if you're stepping on gravel or if you're walking through a field you can hear that and if there's like an echo like you could hear walking through a cave and like if you use your echolocation you will get the audio cue of something coming back and like depending on how loud it is or um the doppler effect um and if you don't know what the doppler effect is it's just the changing our frequencies based on distance from the object that's creating the sound so um yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, my my nerd is sh my nerd is showing. No, it's but, okay. Um, I love you. Yeah. It. But yeah, I I put too much thought into this, and I wrote that in like. No, I love this level of detail. I no, love this level of detail. Um, but yeah. I mean, because you're literally taking something or like things that we take for granted and using it as a way to bring people together. That are playing and in two totally different ways <laughs> and, and having so that way they can use that communication of oh i can't hear anything in the game but i can use my echolocation so i can communicate what i you know well i can use my sight to see what i i can tell you what i see but i can't you know hear it and the other person is literally telling you hey i can't hear anything or yeah. i can't see anything but all, all the stuff that i hear is this, that, and the third. And so that's a that's a pretty cool dynamic. It's kind of like with, um, well, I haven't played It Takes Two, but I'm pretty sure It Takes Two does a lot of that where you need to like pair up in very different ways through the different challenges throughout the game where you have to do this thing and then another one person is doing one thing completely different from the other person and you have to make it work out <laughs> depending on how, you know, whatever the activity is in the game. Same with, um, what's the other game that, the guy that made that produced um take two oh, yeah way another out. game before that oh, way out. yeah way out. <clears throat> way out so i think that's a pretty good take on that too yeah because I, I what you said about like i, I my uh, inspiration was also people with disabilities because like the first person mm -hmm. i thought of was oh my gosh the, the name is escaping me um it was look <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying. No, I'm legit not trying to no. be funny. I'm being, but you're picking no, somebody that's no, deaf, no, and no, you're because... picking somebody that's blind, and so that's that's where I was thinking. You're separating no, the two no, for no. you know somebody that's you know. I wasn't trying to be funny. That was not a bit. No, 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 no,
<laughs> Wait. Because he's blind. <laughs> it's just all black. That's messed up. It's so messed up. <laughs> that is so wrong. Oh, it's oh so God. many wrong. And I shouldn't be laughing at it, but here I am. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ. I love the internet, bro. I love the internet. <laughs> All right, so speaking of superheroes, I'm falling, not necessarily the aspect of disabilities, but um, I know that in Marvel, in the Marvel Universe, or at least previously, we've had the X-Men games where there are the... Um, the X-Men action RPGs, I forget their name exactly. Um, X-Men Legends? Yes. And like, Man, I played the fuck out of X-Men Legends. I never played any of them, and I've always wanted to. And I've always thought the concept of you leveling up a character Diablo style and having, like, you know, Diablo-ish top-down moves and stuff where you're, like, having AoE attacks and stuff like that is real cool. Because I... I I mean, I like Diablo. It's just that it's kind of hard for me to get into sometimes because there's just so much going on. And that's coming from the JRPG guy of the of the group. And But in my JRPG brain, and thinking of a superhero um, turn-based game, I'm thinking more in the realm of X-Men because there is a lot of material there for a X-Men turn-based RPG. I don't know you where know, it would go. Right. And I wouldn't know where it would exactly go, but having it where, of course, Magneto would probably be like the final boss, or maybe there's like some extreme super mutant that even Magneto cannot even handle himself or something, or maybe Phoenix is like this, like the final boss or something. It wouldn't have to be super duper canonical um, or even related to the movies. It could be its own original story. But what you would do is, um, as you progress through the game, you probably start off with, like, I don't know, maybe, like, Cyclops, Wolverine, and maybe Storm, you know, some of the OG characters. Um, and you would have, like, Professor Xavier as a tutorial function where he's explaining all these different turn-based mechanics. And since I've been kind of sort of riding the high lately of um, Octopath Traveler, the first one, because that has a, like a really good turn-based system where there's a mechanic where, excuse me, if you wait a turn, there's this function called boost where um, you can you increase can, the... I know what you're talking about, where you can like kind of like yeah, you can, double up your abilities yeah, and, and do it's pretty way thin. more effective damage. Yeah, you can do way more effective damage. Um, but I would also do that with like healing and stuff. Now healing would be kind of weird in, in like an X-Men game. And so, because there aren't really any healer classes as far as the mutants are concerned. So all of that stuff would be character dependent. And as you progress through the game, it would kind of be kind of sort of like, um, Fire Emblem. Like the, the list of characters would be very large because there's a lot of, good mutants that are part of the academy and then there's a lot of bad mutants that are with magneto and i forget the exact name of that faction in x-men but you could have it where the characters that you know for a fact have good self-healing like uh like wolverine or possibly somebody like um gene gray Deadpool has really good self-healing. Those characters you would probably want for sustainability in your party. And the heavy hitters like Colossus or um, Wolverine. Beast, yeah. I, he could be a tank. Yeah, I guess like Beast to an extent. And I would kind of sort of call him mobility, a little bit of a mobility character too. Um, Slick, he would, they would be able to, you know, be your damage dealers. And you got like Quicksilver. Well, no, Quicksilver's not a, like, Hero. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Kind of sort of. Yeah. Um, but like Quicksilver um, would be like your damage dealer. Your all-arounder could probably be like Cyclops or your ranged 
damage dealer or something. And, you know, you take those characters and as you level up, you get more of their move set or more of the things that you normally see in their comics or in like their movies or in TV shows and stuff like that. And, you know, you get to the, I mean, it wouldn't be anything overly exaggerated, but, you know, maybe you have like some kind of like combo system where like, maybe Wolverine and Storm team up to do, like, a really big, powerful move where she, like, sends a tornado, and he, like, does drill claw in the tornado, and it does, like, a huge AOE attack where it damages an entire mob or something like that. And just making it very, like, kind of sort of Final Fantasy 1 through 10-ish. <laughs> not, not, not anything crazy. But what would Jubilee do? The best X Men character. Oh my God, that's life steal. So I I would consider her to be kind of sort of a a sustainable hero because she wouldn't yeah. be able to heal necessarily. She can't Wait. heal other people because when she touches people, you're thinking of Rogue, not yeah, Jubilee. Yeah. Oh, that's Rogue. Sorry, yeah. I'm talking about Jubilee. Jubilee. You know, fireworks, the the sparkle. Girl. Sparkler, and stuff. I guess you could be damage or decoy or something. Decoy. <laughs> That could be decoy. Like she has like fake out abilities where she like buffs their um like their um their accuracy. Ah, God. I just love this photo of her. <laughs> what is this? What is she doing? She's I extremely see happy to do She's only like, fireworks yeah. and nothing else. <laughs> and it's just like, yes, I get it. You you create distractions all the time, but <laughs> what do you really do? <laughs> Absolutely what if it nothing. was like in a like a I was thinking what if it was like in a, like a you know XCOM you... so strategy See, and, and I thought about that but like brainstormer was like that would be it, it would kind of get sort of kind of complicated or like a real time strategy a yeah cause it would get very it would get bogged down with having to do a lot of busy work and just moving around and you know i feel like the 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 since a lot of the anti-heroes or their villains majority of them are stupid ass sentinels well no that that would work because if you just have like a bunch of the sentinels as enemies and you know you have to strategize all right you could bring only bring four x-men to solve this you know puzzle so do you bring beast jubilee cyclops and wolverine and how do you solve this you know with those four characters So I can see that working. Or maybe have, or like you can have like something where like Silver Surfer, like everybody knows how overpowered Silver Surfer is and how dangerous he is, or Phoenix, yeah. and like they are non-playable. They're NPCs that you cannot interact with necessarily, but they can alter the the actual board or the actual you know stage that you're on because if you're getting near them or they get near an enemy, they do a like a ridiculous amount of damage to you just for you being near them or they affect certain aspects of the game and you you know you just have to play around that because that's just part of how the stage works and so my my jrpg brain is like you know firing off all the cylinders of like how would that look like how would you be able to make that into a a systematic rpg where it's them leveling up, you grinding kind of sort of in areas to get new abilities, maybe getting new mutants, or maybe even a character creator where you can make your own mutant. And, you know, barring certain certain aspects of other mutants that aren't already unlocked, like maybe there's a New Game Plus section where after you've beat the game and you maybe you've missed some mutants that you did not unlock on the first playthrough and you don't have their abilities yet. And so that's your incentive to try, oh, maybe I want Sabertooth's, um, you know, maybe I want his, like, some of his strength powers or things like that because I didn't get him in a certain scenario in the story. So I need to play the game again so that way I can try to make that kind of character with maybe I can combine some Wolverine stuff or maybe I can have, like, a, a Storm a storm and cyclops like you know overpowered thing like it's just this is this weird power fantasy of an x-men character but you know that would probably be like part two or something the first game would be very 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 like basic care canonical characters that you know 
and love and you're familiar with, but then the second game will be like, you're new to the academy and you can do something with that and hmm. make your own character. But it's still the same formula just built upon with like the boost stuff from like Octopath and Bravely Default and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know so, what that okay. kind of reminds me of Devil Survivor a little bit, where you get to like fuse different monsters together and like some of their abilities collide. If you're saying something, I can't hear you. That's all of Shimigami Tensei. That's literal. I, I know about that all day, every day. Yeah. Well, yeah, I used to play the hell out of that in high school, boy. Like, don't my work pull out my DS. Just tip tapping away. So, yeah, that's mine. Oh. All right. Um, well, let's circle back around. Um, this one came up. Uh, this is idea due to recent news. Um, and if this company doesn't do this, they're absolute fools for not doing this. Um, my game, my second game that doesn't exist is a Microsoft kart racer. So, developer... I want to see Marcus Phoenix riding on the back of a Brumac, a mini Brumac. No, bro. A mini Brumac. <laughs> bro, bro, this shit would get wild, bro. So, the developer, in my mind, would be Sumo Digital. That's the same people who did um, Sonic and All-Star Racing Transform, Sonic Team Racing. They've proven they, they can make kart racers. But, like, looking at if you if you're looking at just cartoon characters, um, we have Banjo Kazooie, Battletoads, Blinks the Time Sweeper. You have Oh my god, that's a Microsoft property? Yeah. Jesus Christ, what are they doing? <laughs> you got Crash Bandicoot now. You got Crash. Spiral the Dragon. Yo. Yeah. You have um yeah. Unfortunately. Uh, you could, <laughs> you could do Ori from Ori Will of Wisp. You could do um, what's his name from Psychonauts? Um, Rasputin. Yeah. Yeah, Rasputin from from Psychonauts. Ooh, that would be sick. Then you could get like real stupid. You can have like people from Killer Instinct, Marcus Phoenix, Master hmm. Chief. Master Chief. Uh, the the Fucking... Fallout um. Fallout um, mascot, the Fallout Boy mascot, Conquer, uh, pirates from Sea of Thieves, um, almost any rare uh, entity. Uh, Doom Banjo guy, Zui, Ryan, one of them fucked up cartons. <laughs> uh, a jetpack from the from the hit jetpack game by Rare. <laughs> Joanna Dark. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Game that ones, boy, boy. talked about in like five years. Uh, uh, BJ Blasowicz from Wolfenstein. <laughs> from Wolfenstein, yeah. yeah, boy. Like it, you can get so stupid with it, but like uh, the pinatas from Viva Pinata. <laughs> Holy shit! I forgot about that. That's that. a throwback. <laughs> oh my so, god, I used to love Viva Pinata. So like, like, I never played a game. Oh, but I used to watch the so there's so much you can you can do just off of that, um, and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of other stuff that I just didn't, you know, mention. But like, and Sumo Digital, especially with Sonic and All Stars Racing Transform, they did such a good job of taking like Sega's history and like really like representing it well. Like you had a Shinobi stage, like almost nobody remembers Shinobi. Like that franchise pretty much died in the '90s, um, but like you can. They, well, they 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 tried to come back in the early two thousands. That one like DS Nightshade. game that was like mid. <laughs> no, there was a, there was Nightshade that was like a um follow up from it, but it didn't hit off because it just wasn't Shinobi. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that was the problem. They can they can deep dig deep into the the archives and and pull some stuff out. So, I it will be. Absolutely criminal if they don't make a Microsoft Kart Racer. Right. I agree. I, th I think that, that, you know, and there would be so many different stage designs. I mean, because if Ooh. if DreamWorks can come out with a Kart Racer 
for Shrek. <laughs> with Shrek and Fiona and Farquaad yeah. and all their other DreamWorks properties, why could not, what, like, why can't Microsoft literally just make free money? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, literally, it does not have to be a live service game. You can literally just, just please, just, just, just make it a kart racer a la Mario Kart 64 or Double Dash. Put all the characters in the game and all the tracks in the game the way it's supposed to be without adding DLC and all this extra crap. Make it a functioning online community where you don't have to have somebody's friend code to, you know, make a lobby for or, like, everybody to play in. And, and also thought about it, like, even if they don't do sumo digital, sumo digital, they could just get the people who did Crash Team Racing. They oh, can, yeah. They could just Crash get Team that Racing team. Real, dude. Yeah, yeah, they could just get that team and just like, hey, make Crash Team Racing again, but just for everybody. <laughs> Everybody's under Microsoft belt. So do it now, or else. Chop chop. So yeah, we're fired. That that's my that's my pick. Uh, Max, what is your second one? All right, so here we go. I was watching uh, a little bit. Of, I was watching some One Punch Man clips the other day, and I was thinking, huh. And then I and then I was and then I seen some my hack your academia stuff, and I was like, oh. So I was like, why don't we have a hero simulator? So here's the here's the thing, right? You're not necessary. Okay, it's it's the game. There's two there's two phases of the gameplay with it. You're not just like your own custom hero fighting crime, nothing like, like that. You're making a hero business, just as like as if you were in My Hero Academia, right? Like you have your own firm. <laughs> And your goal, yeah, your goal is to, of course, become, say, like the number one hero. But there's a lot of other bullshit with it. Like you have to, you have to one, you start a, you start, you start making your character. What's their powers? You know, you you're already past. Like the game starts at your graduation from like the hero academy, and you're starting out your firm. You start flat, fucking broke. You have to make a name for yourself from doing like small stuff and you build your reputation. So there's a few aspects of it. Of course, reputation, uh, you go a location, like there's a say a variety of cities you can go to, you pick your location. Uh there's there's events that happen throughout the game. Like say, uh this villain attacked this city. Now this happened. Or like economic shifts or really stupid stuff. But the the theme of it I, it's not too serious like it's very comedic like you can do some fucked up shit like say uh, there's one phase of the gameplay where you're out on the streets like fighting crime this is where you control your hero and say you're fighting the villains but you can say destroy property around you and after the mission is done you'll get the news report hero uh, a hero had uh, destroys say a million dollars of property damage yeah, you get the bill or <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, citizens, uh, citizens fucking left, uh, countless left homeless due to apartment, uh, say 30 apartment structures being destroyed in this battle. And yeah, and then you have to take the hit from that, right? Imagine like the but, superhero say, um, in the news interviews and like the Fallout style do dialogue boxes come up and you gotta hit the right, you have to say the right response right, yeah. in order to impress the, right, the yeah. masses. Exactly. And it's like, it's not, it's, it's again, it's, it's comedic. I'm thinking like one punch man comedic where you have some villains that's like, like, oh, I ate too much crab. Now I'm a crab monster type shit. And yeah. And then sometimes you get like event, like big events where it's uh, like, like a, like a big time crime group with powerful villains comes into play and you have to approach it your own way. Of course, you know, you you build your your hero, you like you have to train your hero to become stronger. You hire sidekicks and you hire like interns to help your firm so it's more efficient and stuff like that. And it's uh, the, the again, the two parts of the gameplay is one like building building your firm. The second part is you being you playing as your hero being out on the streets 
actually like fighting crime and what and whatnot. So now, it's a, it's like don't all, uh, of Superman that. or um, Spider Man, the recent Spider Mans, where you just like rent like shit just randomly happens. Yeah, they can be random events happening, or say like uh, uh, this crime group is attacking this city, and it's in your city. So that now you go, okay, let me go handle that. And while this is happening, something else in the background can happen too. Like it can be like random events happen, just like how it would be, say, in, in the real world. And you have to not only fight crime, but you have to be aware of the citizens around, make sure no one's getting hurt. You have to be aware of the property damage that you're doing. You have to be, you have to keep in head all of this stuff that's happening at the same time. So it's, yeah. I like it. And yeah, it's it's so it's a lot you have to mic it's a lot you have to micromanage. Again, it's not too se- it's it's not too serious. It's like a lot of comedic stuff to it, but the game I want the game I want the gameplay to go pretty fucking in depth. I like that, especially with the property damage, bro. Superman got them billions and billions of dollars in debt, bro. Well, the problem is like, they they can't ever send a bill to Superman because they don't know where he lives. <laughs> the man just destroys stuff, and dips. And then Bruce Wayne just writes a check. It's like, would it also be everything. like a function where you could like, if you're like maybe the the rating system for um you being an intern hero kind of like in my hero where you have to like go through courses and stuff and then you have to like go up the echelon of becoming an actual hero and being certified and your ratings Mm -hmm. may or may not be good enough and like the game harshly judges you on like you have to be very pristine as to how well you perform in your in your evaluations like how many citizens are harmed how much property damage is being done did you how quickly did you handle the situation uh how did you use your powers effectively how, like how, how many how many times did you have to use your cooldowns to defeat the enemy or it's defuse the situation and if like after a certain period of time there's these like promotional situations and it would determine on whether or not if you can become a solo hero or a sidekick and if you're a sidekick, and, you have this really overpowered NPC ally that you have to work with, but there you're also being evaluated on how you back them up with the same thing. And so you have to prove yourself as if, you know, I I'm I can be an independent hero and you know, I can, you know, do these kind of you know, hero-ish things. I, I do not need to be a sideline hero. I don't need to be a a, a I'm 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 not a sidekick. Like, so you have to prove yourself, maybe. That's what but that can no, be an aspect of it. But the, yeah, that could be an aspect of it. Maybe like a pregame type thing. But the gameplay I was starting, I was thinking of like you start right after graduation. So you're already oh. like you already said as you have your own firm open, and you're this small time broke ass firm, and you're your own hero. You have your own identity, and you have to build it from the ground up, basically. And you can you can fuck up from the start. You could like you could you could go out there try to try. You could go out and the game lets you. It, the game will let you do shit like trying to attack a big time villain when you're like a low class Level one. Yeah, and you can go get your ass beat. And <laughs> like I want it to be funny. Go downgrade too because if you're like yeah. messing up like certain missions and like people are like man you're trash <laughs> you're trash you're doing this and like, and like it, it, you you'll show up and, and citizens will be like what are you doing you suck boo <laughs> like <laughs> bro imagine <laughs> superman coming and coming to save somebody they were like what are you doing here like you <laughs> made you you destroyed my car that I had three payments left on last week get out of here <laughs> Oh gosh, but um, also hopping on the idea, like with with Max establishing the idea right after graduation, and combining that with what D said, um, the type of ability you get to choose at the beginning, like when you first introduce your like character, you're like, 
I also thought of the idea, like, even though it's like a high school academy that UA is in My Hero Academia, but I was thinking more so like like a college graduation. So how you have a, a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science or something like that, you have a different route that you graduated the academy with, whether you're a uh, support, whether uh, that's like healing or like um, you like perform like inflictions, like how in Pokemon you get to poison a pokemon you get to like um paralyze a pokemon or something like that or yeah. like you max out your defense you max out your uh, strength or like your ability is geared more towards like being in the background like being a true support like hero or something like that and then you can base your firm around that and you start building there and then you also have the option to like um, have the heroes that are working at your firm like outsource to other firms because oh um we could use a support hero or we could use somebody that's like strong for this mission and stuff like that so that might also be an option yeah and i was thinking on that i love that idea i was i love that idea i was thinking so more so of like university is like the pre-game so th so you it's like you go through the years you you decide to take this you decide you want to take these these this this and this classes you do this 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 and this and like you said that builds up your starting stats for it so when you get to that graduation time your the stats and the powers you start with going out the gate is based off of those decisions that you made during the pregame during that little pregame at the beginning where you're in university I can dig it. I can dig that. Because then that adds a little bit more camaraderie between you and maybe other firms. And if yeah. there is a if, if there's an online aspect, you can inspect other players' firms, see how they stack up against yours, and maybe you can like Hold collab on. or something. You do co-op missions. Hold on, someone's knocking at my door. Oh, he's starting his uh -oh. first mission. Right, his first mission in his firm. He's breaking the keys. Did you leave your keys? Oh no, it's a villain on the other side. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, lust. What's up, man? Oh, here the it's not, it's not a friend. How you doing? All right. Well, but I do. I I, I kind of really dig that idea. And y'all remember that game? Um, it was like an online PC game. I don't know if it ever came to consoles at any point. Like City of Heroes. I heard That's of that. Doesn't ring a bell. Is it wasn't like, like a it MMO. was this really cool thing. Like you could just make your own hero, and like you literally just played online with other people that made heroes. I know heroes. exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly and what you're talking about. And you would just about. do stuff and missions and like complete quests and stuff around the big city and like other like hub worlds and stuff, and just be a hero. And you would just level up as you went along and did things. Like getting unlocking different skill trees and uh, and different skill sets for your heroes and stuff like that. It was really really cool. I always wanted to play it, but at the time, like I never had a PC to actually play it. <laughs> and I don't even know if the community is even there or if the game still is out. I don't think the game at this point. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, it might. It still might not. I mean, but it, there might be like some, you know, private servers or something like that that are around. I mean, hey, if if Fantasy Star Online still has private servers, well, that's just a bunch of nerds keeping their Dreamcasts alive. Anyway, Clayton, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so th this is another. <laughs> <That's true>. uh, <laughs> well, yeah. this, is a, this is another non-IP. So the title of this one is Idol One Hundred and One. Do you want to be the top idol? Do you think you have what it takes? Dance, sing, and work through this interactive idol trainer. But dear, idol training games already exist. They do, but not like this one. So, um, work your way through the idol academy with pitch and diction recognition with your favorite J-pop and K-pop songs and singing courses that teach you how to read music during the process. Um, um, stardom also requires top-notch dance moves. Through motion detection, dance your way through the most recognizable choreography in the business. And you have to keep your body in tip-top shape if you want to hold a candle to the professionals. 
Guided exercise routines with motion detection will help you keep a regular exercise routine compiled from real personal trainers of the stars with an option to customize your own workout to fit what's best for you. Levels range based on abilities and accommodations for every exercise are provided, but not the equipment. Most, in, most routines require little to no equipment. You can sing, can, you can sing, dance, but can you do both? After leveling up through the academy, your time has come. Your big break is happening soon. Perform for the biggest names, not actually, in the industry and sign with a label if they make an offer. Do you have what it takes to be the next big idol? So um, this inspiration was from the on Xbox 360 Connect Dance Central because I loved that game. Of course you did. Uh, like... Wait, not, not actually, like... What's that game that Ubisoft keeps just shoving dance. down our throats? Yeah, not that. just dance. <laughs> no, well, dance. Like I had a 360, and my parents one Christmas like just bought the Connect, and Dance Central came with it. But so, like, my favorite song was Benny Benassi's yeah. "Um Satisfaction." But <laughs> yeah, so I took the idea of with motion detection with the camera from the Connect, um, and how it was able to accurately like scan your body. And then see if, like, to the best of your abilities, if you could recreate the dance moves that are, like, on screen. Not, like, Just Dance, but I like the Connect version better rather than Just Dance. Um, and then, like, the pitch and diction, uh, but more yeah. so pitch, like, that came, from the, that came from the idea of Rock Band and Guitar Hero, or, oh, well, mainly Rock Band, because Rock Band was the first um, rhythm game to introduce vocal recognition because it came with a microphone and stuff like that. And then you can see, like, as you went up the staff, like, like the pitches got higher and lower, blah, 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 and all that stuff. And um, the exercise idea came from We Fit, even though I never had, like, the little pad or anything. But the, I always like the idea of video games incorporating exercise, because I also really love Dance Dance Revolution. Like, Dance Dance Revolution X on the PlayStation 2, that was, like, one of my most played games. Because, like, it was incorporating exercise. I was getting a workout, and I was having fun. Like, I'm a huge advocate for gamification in terms of, like, making things that seem monotonous fun. Like, and eventually show results. So, um, it was like, it's like a compilation of all three of those ideas into one game. Um... So not no, more so diction, like I wrote diction at the time, but now I'm thinking like, oh, that, that's a little bit too advanced. But like, um, if you... I mean, just <laughs> note accuracy itself would be... The yeah. water what? Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, and then I also thought of online play. So, um, of course, oh, you could have idol battles. Like, oh, and um, if you beat this person with no accuracy or with the dance routine accuracy, down. or you could even... Um, challenge each other to fitness exercises online like with other players like you can show your uh, on camera or not whatever like that um and then you can level up your idol level until you become a professional like idol like you're big in the business you have a high level and stuff like that and um just a side note another inspiration i'm not sure if you guys ever heard of this franchise but um idol master I, I, nope. I, I, I That's where yeah. Hatsune Miku came from. Um, I don't App Master actually came before Hatsune Miku, but um, really? mm? like I loved, love, love, no, love no, I don't no. Master. Don't pay um, attention to me, y'all, because I don't know what I, what I am talking about. <laughs> No, no, you good. But um, yeah. So I just combined a lot of my favorite things because, like, there was a point where I used to exercise, like, l l uh, where I used to exercise regularly and I enjoyed it. Where I used to dance regularly, and I enjoyed it, and I'm currently living out my musician dream, studying and stuff. So um, I just want it to be very forward because, like, K J J and K pop are getting really big here in the West. And stuff like that it's already big in the east but now it's getting bigger over here so this will broaden like the field and exposure of like of asian countries like music rep because like you have groups like black pink performing at coachella which is like the um the west's like largest music festival like with big headliners and you have other groups like bts um exo um 
new jeans and all these other like J and K pop groups and solo like solo artists like Jungkook and Lehigh and stuff like that. So it's just my J K pop fan like <laughs> experiment baby that I wrote down. So and um when you do online play you like as I said you can have exercise like um co like compete with exercises and stuff like that but you could also do in combinations like you want to sing and dance to this like probably boys with love by bts facing halsey you can do that you can have that battle with the motion detection and the pitch recognition um and again i had i had a lot of inspiration for this because there were multiple interviews where beyonce was like oh my dad will have me run miles and sing at the same time so she will always be performance ready and stuff like that. So it's like abuse. <laughs> it, 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 it was abuse. It was abuse. But like those different combinations, like, oh, do you want to do just a singing challenge, like with somebody online? Sure, do that. Singing and dancing, sure. Just dancing, sure. <laughs> exercise and dance, sure. Sing and exercise, sure. Like, um, and then you get to upload the equipment that you do and do not have at home and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, if you need any accommodations, there are um, videos. I actually found a very good website um, for um, that works different muscle groups or like even cardio and stuff like that. And it will actually show you every accommodation that is possible with the same effects if you just want to f focus on your fitness and stuff like that. So um, combining the arts, the technology, and entertainment. So... Ooh. do you yeah. would you need to have like some kind of motion capture video thing especially for the the dance move stuff because a lot of that stuff can be kind of sort of inaccurate and not a lot of people like the connect i well yeah and, um, i mean because i understand the ne the necessity for it but like we would need like a new piece of like really good. Is the connect I, really good? At, their stuff, the, they have stuff for AR. Yeah. They already have. They already have that stuff for uh, augmented reality. They yeah. already have that Hell, stuff. Hell, I wouldn't even say that. I would say just use your phone. Yeah, just like, do it as an app on your phone. That was part of the uh, accommodations that I was also thinking of. Like, if you don't have like a specific technology, um, you can either use your phone, which m more than likely the average smartphone these days has like some form of motion detection. Um, it, you can also play on your Switch controllers, um, with special like either arm or leg bands or like I think it was like some Ring Fit Adventure Switch. has the leg yeah things. Yeah, Ring yeah. Fit. Um, the new Wii Sports. Thing. Yeah, they have like the soccer where you can attach it to your leg for the soccer game. Yeah, it was just some form of motion detection, not necessarily with the camera. Okay, but, so that means I need two sets of Joy Cons, two for my arms and two for my leg. Not necessary. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing all of it. I, I was just thinking yeah. like one arm, one leg. I think that's how Just Dance work, or like just one like. Well, Joy -Con. Just Dance is you just have arm, one arm. One leg. No, yeah. Just Dance is just one. Yeah. Probably, I, I was thinking very far in the future because no. I know this is Do not going to be a, a, like any kind of thing, but like th that will be my dream game, and your boy it. will be buff as fuck. <laughs> like. I would exercise. And I don't I'm know like, if you get buff from that. <laughs> because, because like, no, no, because of the portion where I said like the exercise routines and stuff like that. I mean, you doing um, body weight? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> Did you not hear where it's like? I mean, we get that that you're doing, yeah. you know, the yeah. entire <laughs> shebang of what it means to be an idol. Sing this yeah. K-pop song and, while curling. Yeah, but you, need to, <laughs> but like, you're making it sound like we have to be like jacked in no. order to do this stuff <laughs> no no they're different they're they're different 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 levels but um yeah that that's my ideal game i will play that every day more than overwatch more than apex and max is just casually getting abused you know what is going on over there I guess that. I don't know what's do i have to put you on timeout right in the club, everybody. I'm on trying. To, I'm trying. When this goes on okay. YouTube, people are gonna be looking at me like, "What the fuck is he doing?" <laughs> That's your Zoom. 
And you're going to be the, the only one out of box. No. Out of the, you're going to be pointing to you. Yeah, and all four of us are in different states, so well, I can't even come and help you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever happens, happens. All right, Squid um, is on you. Deontay is on you. No. All right, so it's on me now. <laughs> oh my God. All right, mine is very, very, very simple, and it would be an Ooh. easy, easy. <clears throat> Excuse me, bronchitis is, is annoying. Um, mm-hmm. it, is, it would be a very easy cash grab, and I would just eat it up if this were to happen. Okay. I need Arc System. To stop doing what they're doing with Blaze, with Grand Blue, Blaze Blue, and Guilty Gear for like two, three years. And since they did DBZ fighters, I just need a Shonen fighters. Just a Shonen fighters. Mm-hmm. Literally like the, a two D Shonen anime. A Shonen anime NBC two, or or Infinite. Or three ish feeling shonen fighter with their current graphics for for Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, with whatever anime properties that are allowed at the time. I'm talking that they could still use Naruto, they could still use some of the DBC at DBZ fighters assets. They could they can make some new stuff for maybe JoJo's, they can make new stuff for Jujitsu. They can make new stuff for um, maybe they could put Captain Levi in there somewhere. I don't know. It would look Mugen-ish, but it would actually be an officially licensed property, where it wouldn't there wouldn't be the need for it to be on something like Salty Vets because it already exists and the, already and the actual models would be yeah. there. If anybody has not watched Salty Bets on Twitch before, my goodness, oh, at least please. give it like 30 minute Man, watch. We, we need to have another session of watching Salty Bet. We haven't yeah, done like, that in a while. It is extremely entertaining. Like, you just turn your brain off and you just watch. Like, if anybody doesn't know what Mugen is, Mugen is basically this, um, this fighting game engine where it takes sprites and fighting game properties or not even fighting games really it can be literally barney and as a meme or something <laughs> and right. they put they give them move sets like a 2d fighter or like a dig dug like one of the dig dug enemies not the dig dug character but like the little dragon dinosaur thing like it only has like one move but it's like broken as hell because it just does that one move and it does a a, a hell of a lot of damage and you know, it, it's just ridiculous. But if we if we had like the kind of budget we have for Street Fighter Six, Tekken Eight, and you know Guilty Gear Strive and Mortal Kombat One right now, and we made a NBC Two, Three, or Infinite ish kind of Shonen fighter, my goodness, who would not want to see Tsukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen fight? A nine tail Naruto or something like that. That would be dope. Or but maybe, I, that's gonna be a nightmare to balance, bro. Oh it, man! It, it, but fighting games are already terribly balanced to begin with half the time when they launch and stuff. Honestly, I think the biggest problem is just gonna be all of the IP, the, the licensing. Yeah, the I know licen- that. that would I mean, be the but thing. I mean, but like you said, this is like games that do not exist, yeah. and this will probably never ever exist. We we it's had kind of a, we had jump force. What do you mean? We had. I, you about notice that I did not say or mention or even specify jump force in any ah. way, shape, or form. But that's that's your game. It's you got your your Goku. I never ever your, your went Naruto. jump force near me in a twenty foot. You radius. got your Luffy. Naruto is the way that people that don't watch anime pronounce Naruto. That's like parents. You got that that Naruto person or that that orange man. <laughs> that Vegeta. You want to play? What, what, what's his name? Vegeta. The Narada, or whatever his name is. You know he, he's real cool, right? He's that fox boy. <laughs> and so I think really like mine is very like, I mean you could balance that how you will, and you know, 
try to make it as as faithful to their move sets. How you would scale damaging and things of that nature, pairings of characters, like I would I mean, I'm not I wouldn't sit here and try to like come up with a bunch of IPs that would try to be in that, but just a shonen two D fighter. Not an arena fighter. Not an arena fighter in any way, shape, or form. You do not need we do not need jump force two. No, none of no that. Care, no custom creator where nobody talks in the game to each other at all. No voice acting, no nothing. It would have to literally be a 2D fighter in the style of how DBZ fighters or um, Strive is in currently. And, you know, let in the JoJo character. It's not all of them. I mean, because JoJo's just recently had, like, a fighting game that came out, like, one or two years ago. And that's like, I heard that it's actually, like, pretty well, that Pretty was good. a remaster of an older one. Really? Yeah, that was like one that was like from 360 PS3 era that they remastered oh. and redone. With all the Put DLC. them in there too. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in there too and just give them like it's make it a brand new sprites or you know, stuff like that. And just not being lazy with it. Give it like a Give it your standard arcade mode with like a ridiculous boss that is non canonical, but they're like broken, I don't know what, or something, or maybe like some kind of boss gauntlet mode, time attack, survival, team battle. Ooh. Give it the whole shebang. Don't just give me a little training room with the 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 room where it's just <laughs> the 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 white like crazy pe- person's room with the lines that separate the meters between each other and frame data and all of that. Give me give me some like really original levels from their properties and stuff like that. Put like you can give them different ca- colors. You don't have to give different skins for, for characters because that would be way too much. That would be way, way, way too much. Just give them alternate colors. Um, like skins. It doesn't we gotta go balls deep on the, if we're going to go balls deep on this, why not do skins? Because then uh, uh, it wouldn't necessarily be about the skins. It would be more so about the characters that they would incorporate into the game. I'd rather them make new characters than give new skins. Because then at that point, at least you're getting more content and not just, oh, a new skin for a character that does not have a new moveset or anything like that. Give them a bunch of alternative colors, kind of like a la... Call Girls, which has like a like a lot of like different colors, or I think Third Strike Online Edition, they have like a lot of alternate colors that kind of reference other things of 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 other media and stuff like that with their colors color scheming of things. And I think King of Fighters 13 does the same thing with a lot of different color skins mm-hmm. as well and alternative colors. Um, they they but give, give 13. You can actually count. go in and edit colors. Yeah, like that was really cool too. Like I can make Joe literally just all black. Like he would he would look burnt for no reason. And that was it. Like it, that's just what it was. <laughs> and so I went like and and I'm old school, so I don't want DLC. I want to unlock and earn all of my characters. I and like maybe like even character. like even if you like lock an entire set or an entire anime of characters or two or three sets of anime characters behind a difficulty level until you get to a certain point in the game where you're like you've mastered or at least come to grips with certain mechanics of the game enough to where you're at a higher level and these characters are you know built to be played for character for people that understand how to use these characters or you or use the game's mechanics better. I don't know what the you know mechanics would necessarily be, but just to you know further the longevity of the game where hey, if you played on medium and you beat the game with Mikasa, for instance, you unlock Levi, but like early Levi in like season two or something like that, where he was just like unreal and just doing everything not non-spoiler related but he was just doing unreal stuff and just being real 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 cool 
and you know his moveset is very very mechanical and very meticulous and things that you have to do but you have to earn that and of course maybe you can unlock all the boss characters or like maybe very important plot line characters that are character playable in the game so you know this is kind of my thought process about it maybe it maybe an original storyline with like an like an op boss or something like that like i don't know it wouldn't be anything too too crazy kind of like how abyss is in like mvc2 and he doesn't belong to anything he's just a blob <laughs> the transformers <laughs> um so yeah that would be my very simple just give me all my Joan, my shonen jump characters Put them in a 2D fighter a la MVC2. It'd have the roster be up to like, I don't know, 50 characters. God damn. I mean, we got to think that the, it, the game's got to last. True. It's got to last. That balance is. And I said no fun. DLC. Game's got to last. You got to unlock it. Maybe you start off with like 12. Three from like three series. And then as you go along, you're like, oh, snap, they got. One Piece characters in it, and you're not taking like the entire cast of an anime, like maybe like three of the most popular, like maybe by popular vote or something before the devs actually create the game. And like they say, all right, well, we're just going to put these three because this is what people voted on. We're going to put these three or four or five, whatever, in the game. And that's what it's going to be for, you know, for now. And maybe if there needs to be DLC for it. We could possibly do that along the line, but the initial full game roster, when if you unlock everything, once you have you know done your due diligence, is 50 max. And then if there needs to be extra and there is a demand for it, and the sales have happened, we can add extra characters. We can add extra IPs from other animes and properties. So, so my my final choice is kind of similar to yours. It's a fighting game. Um, cheating a bit only because it exists only illegally. Um, and then two, I would take your same developer, Arxis, to be the developer. I just want a good fight, Sonic fighting game. Like I, oh, I really oh, yeah. want a good Sonic fighting game. And it's like, it Max and, and Deontay remember Sonic the Fighters and how we used to play that in college. <laughs> Yeah, that game is that so game is, broken. Uh, but it's dumb fun, but it's not like competitive. Fun. It's just dumb fun. You want like in you want like right. in depth competitive like can be at a fighting game competition, fight game. Sonic Fighter, where there's real frame data. You know what's plus on block, what's not. Instead of just I have this three hit combo and Eggman will win every time because he's just Eggman, and we know that he's broken. Right, and then there's like Sonic Battle, which. I enjoyed a lot on the GBA, but again, it's not. It's like kind of like an arena fighter esque, you know. And it's yeah, it could be dumb, broken, especially with certain characters. And absolutely, I say illegal because there's a Sonic, there's a fan game, fan Sonic fan, um, find a game. Um, yeah, I've seen it. I've, I've definitely seen. It. I know what you're, exactly what you're talking hey, about. Hey man, that game got so many reused and stolen assets. And, and that's the problem. <laughs> One, obviously, it's using Sonic characters. Two, it is just straight up stealing like characters' move sets from other fighting games. Very it, much so. It's a really but fun game. I've played a it. Good before. game. Yeah, it's it's really fun. Um, but obviously, it's just is is not real. Um, so my thought was, you 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 take the best in the biz when it comes to anime fighters and the flashiness of everything give sonic the dragon ball fighters treatment with with um art system work and like just looking at the sonic you know list there's so much you can do with the characters so sonic will be your could be like a speed type you're you're like flash from injustice super fast really fast combo stuff like that eggman you're he could be in the mech he's like your your big heavy He's your big tank. Tails, he's like your your mix up character. So lots of gadgets, lots mm. of like little devices, um, zoning, 
Amy is just straight up just a brawler yeah. because of the the hammer. So she, the hammer, yeah. she she's like a lot of close com combat, you know, getting up and close up and near Dang. you. Um, Knuckles when? again, another like just heavy hitter, um, wow. very big heavy combos. Metal Sonic, it. he's more like a zoning character, lots of like, you know, beams and stuff like that. Uh, then you could get weird, man. You could get weird, like cream and like cheese. Like Sonic Superstar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't like that character that much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like Fang the Sniper, he can he can be a zoner. Um, um, bean and Bark. Be, yeah, Bean and Well, they was already in the fight. <laughs> bean, um, what was it Bark was already in the fighting game. He was just yeah, Bark was already in the fighters. Um, um, Dude, get some of the Sonic, uh, get some of the Sonic Set AM characters. Sally, Sally Squirrel, the okay. chaotic what? team. Uh, um, yeah, big having like freaking armor, <laughs> like when you're Let trying to throw party and in the game. Chaos with this like the stupid range with his his water attacks. Oh yeah, make him real slow though. Just, oh my is god, slow. Shadow, just imagine him using Chaos Control combos. <laughs> Like, yeah, dog. Like, I, 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 I would geek out on that. Blaze the cat, just nothing but uh, fireballs all day. Different ways to do the fireballs. She mm. would be your, your, um, your Ryu. <laughs> oh yeah, your Shoto. Uh, Silver. I don't know why I'm thinking Silver could just be. What What is Silver's thing? Oh yeah, telekinesis. So you could be like the M Bison, um. Or the um, what's what's the new one in Street Fighter Six? Ew, JP. Yeah, he could be a JP. It's it's a lot to it. I I I just love the idea of a a, a Sonic fighting a game. A refined Sonic yes. fighting game, like a serious it. fighting game that you could like evil but e not evil, e o potential. Yeah, fighter. Just just the. Just imagine the upset, somebody winning Evo, Sonic Fighters, Ultra, with yeah. with Charmy the Bee. <laughs> That's a good B, boy. That's right, man. That's that would be insane, and people, and that's what would make people buy the game for something like that. If somebody finds out that Charmy B is hmm. broken in a in a professional fighting game. That is going to get the Sonic fans to just like flock to it because people don't think about Charmy B like talking about it. They just, thinking about the normal characters that they like, and like I that, think that that would, that would literally yeah. sell itself. How? But, but just like, like you wouldn't like just be getting the Sonic fans; you would be getting you fighting game fans, like mm-hmm. especially if it's actually refined and good. My bad, but just to let y'all boys know, um, <laughs> my laptop's on five percent, and I have not one but two chargers plugged in, and it's not charging. Um, <laughs> Is your so about if, life support? You're irresponsible. N- no, yeah, no, what? no, no, because remember, Max, my charging block. <laughs> ever ever since um, I, you couldn't find my charging block, and then well, that replacement charging block died. I've been struggling to charge my Mac. Oh. So, Throw Max under the bus, huh? Dang. Wow! I I bought I I bought him a new charger, and the new charger I bought him didn't work. It, 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 it wasn't working. premium, baby. It wasn't that Apple. It wasn't that oh, Apple God. original. That's your problem. No, hmm. no, but if I if I cut out, it's it's because of that, not because like I angry. You should be able to like rejoin. Bit. You can you it can rejoin on your phone. Are like buttholes. Everybody has one, and they stink. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I don't, you like I don't like you. <laughs> Excuses like. don't like buttholes. Everybody uh, got one. And he stinks. I do like buttholes. Yeah, <laughs> okay, well, Clayton, I think you had the last one anyway. Oh, right, so you need to speed run this. Oh, Wait, hold on. Everybody I, else had two? I, know, I, said, I knew I said I had two, but I actually have three. Well, let's, so you're a liar. Let, let's get a claim first okay. before he disintegrates. Yeah, before his dies. Okay. Mine, okay. mine is very quick, and it sounds stupid, but like, I think people will really like it. Game Grubs. But Game Grubs. I'm looking at y'all. Okay. Make a sequel to Dream Daddy. Like, li- 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 I, 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 I knew I would get that reaction, but 
if you actually play through it or actually like go th- like you know, watch gameplay of it it's a really well made like dating simulator it's like a very well made dating simulator like good customizations um good daddies um but yeah fill my heart with joy he, he could not <laughs> not say that like uh, that's how they refer to in the game <laughs> He's serious. That's literally how they are referred to in the game. Like dream. Those are some good daddies in that game. <laughs> daddy. Real but, good um, daddy. <laughs> but yeah, I, honestly, that was a very well thought out game. And honestly, like I forgot which character's name. Yeah, um, Locks, and he was a barista or something like that. And like had some really good exposed me to some really good music. Like. Like the one suggestion was for the album Forever by um Mystery Skulls. I still listen to that album. I still listen to that group. But um yeah, sequel, Dream Daddy. I'm here for it. Um Chop Chop. The last it, it came out in twenty eighteen. I mean, yeah. I, I will drop coin for that. And I'm broke. Okay, you could go, Max. Because I know this is gonna die soon. This is my in-depth one. Okay, so the title of it, I'm going to paint a picture. The title is Adrift. You play as, well, this, it, you, you, you play as multiple characters throughout the game, but the gist is it follows pretty much the creator of the universe and in this universe, uh, in the universe of this game. So it is an entity that created the universe with like a big bang, but now it's the story of this creator going throughout its universe, drifting through space throughout its universe, going to different, different, not only planets, but systems and realities and observing different stories that happen throughout this universe. And you play like it'll go say uh, say it'll go to this one planet where there's a there's a planet at war with another like a civilization at war with another. You'll play through that story, go through that narrative, then you'll leave from there. You'll leave from there. You go to another one, and you're jumping throughout this universe, going through different stories. And it's just a it's a narrative experience. It's something to pull at the heartstrings, something to uh get the heart get the get the blood pumping it, it's just like a collection of different stories without throughout this universe but throughout this universe there's certain like there's certain consistencies with it like the you, like it, it of course the universe goes uh follows certain rules follows different things and sometimes some stories will directly influence another it's just a just a good narrative experience because I'm a sucker for a game with a good story. This sounds like an indie game written all over it. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda sorta, yeah. I just imagine like very like spatial audio playing through the entire time and just like spacey chords and you know very much. A lot of sound design of cues. Five. A lot of two five ones. Two five ones. <laughs> Imagine there's a part of the game where the the creator, uh, <laughs> the creator wonders, why did he create this life only for them to fight and cause war? But all of, not all of it is like war. Yeah, a lot of it is like gorgeous. Very, very pretentious and exactly what it would be though. Mm. Yeah. But a lot of, but you know, some of the game, it's serene. Some of it's serene. It goes into, say, uh, observing a planet that doesn't have really intelligent life on it. More, more so the more so creative wildlife, like creatures that are far different from what you'd see on Earth. Sometimes you go into a story. Like sometimes you go through the story of someone who is heartbroken. Sometimes you go into a war-torn civilization. Sometimes you go to uh, you know, a a, a universe, a galaxy that's a, a a solar system that's about to be like, say, torn apart by a 
by a solar flare, something like that, but by a by imploding star, something like that. It just, it, yeah. And how do they deal with the situations that are coming about it? Pretty much. It, it just, they're basically like the Watcher. They're like, think of the Watcher from Marvel. And they're just okay. observing. They're observing the universe that they created, and drifting now, throughout. Now, are they the able to interact directly? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So a god sent. Yes, they basically. are. Pretty much. But it's well, like you you're go, you're just going through the story. You're you're not necessarily. Uh, this is it's more so of a pretty linear experience as far as the way the story goes it's not like you're oh go to this galaxy over no it's a it's again it's a narrative experience it's for the stories for the experience and yeah the gameplay is fun too of course it has gonna have plenty of gameplay aspects to it at plenty of action sequences plenty of uh sometimes you have story parts where you get to select different routes and it just varies by the determined uh you know, as the story progresses. Okay, I can uh, I can dig that. Hopefully, because it's different. Because it's it's yeah, not like it's tales from the borderlands or anything like that. And I don't know many, mm-hmm. like, linear space, like deep space stories that are supposed to be very touching and gripping. I mean. If, uh, if people could comment in the comments about it, I, I'm just not familiar with any of those stories at all. What but, about Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones? That's a very gripping space story. So you just made me pause, risk of rain, too. It's even way more of a of a narrative, you know, heartstring puller than even, anything even better than, to deal with that. I don't care what happens to the women in Two. Too. E- episode one is is a compelling and very thought out narrative experience that Give all me. will will enjoy. Because God knows we love Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Well, to be fair, he wasn't in much of two. <laughs> uh, uh, Enough. I watch Any episode one for the pod racing. You said what now, Max? I watch episode one for the pod racing. I need to replay that game. <laughs> that game was actually really good. On the N64, boy, that yes. game slapped. Yes. <laughs> Bro, like, that I game had no it. business being that good on the N64. Dude, that game for the 64, boy. <laughs> now, this is yes. pod racing. <laughs> man, I, I, played, I, I played that game too much, man. I, that game was an addiction, man. That game was so fun. I, I had very few games on N64, but it was the pod racer. Super Mario 64 and Mario Party 2. Boy, and I played the hell out of Pod Racing. <laughs> it was hard too, but. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to der- derail the conversation. <laughs> that, was there anybody else that had any more? Mm. I, think, I think that's it. No. Okay. Nothing's really brewing in the brain. What? You know, your, my brain smooth. You're the most creative out of all of us. I don't know if Clayton already disconnected or he's doing like the most perfect like mime impression ever. No, I think he's gone. His video froze because I can still hear him. Clayton? I can hear him. Oh no, he disintegrated. Or see him. He disintegrated. Uh, Look what done. He's one with he's the one with the ether. Became one with the Aether. Ooh. Well. That could be part of your game for for the, for the space. Well, R.I.P. Clayton. Um, he's a good friend. All right, so we're going to have a new member of the Sound Test Podcast next week. <laughs> and you, you guys will, will never know who it is. <laughs> Join us next week where we talk about tax evasion and how you can do it. Yes. And how you also cannot have to pay your taxes and do the things that you need to do in order for you to not get caught. Okay, like I know that was a joke, but like I think it was Don't like Microsoft. No. I think Microsoft owed like what billions of dollars in back taxes, and it's just like how? 
how do you like why would y'all do that how do you skirt by for that long being a company that big and owe billions in taxes you stupid no i'm not but all right y'all uh we'll 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 call it this was a good podcast and, and a lot of good ideas i, I, I enjoyed I this really enjoyed it. yeah and good to pick people brains about what if you were to be the head of a studio you're like you know what? i want to make a game damn it what are we gonna make <laughs> now that's your idea up oh, and just steal our our ideas with no credit wonderful right i want to make candy crush too but instead of candy <laughs> It's, it's crack rocks or something. I'm pretty sure they had like a lot. Wait, hold up. <laughs> and all that, you made Clayton officially leave. Right, he's gone. He, he got sick of that. He didn't like that idea. Well, he didn't like that at all. But right, so, <laughs> we're, we're going to go ahead and call it. So, all right. See y'all later. Next time. Uh...